you have not been to administration because I can go and take over the hospital. You have taught their tradition, either the medical. Basically, all I do in clinical pharmacy in 400 every seven semester is leadership and business. There is no clinical pharmacy. No, 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 no. And whether we like it or not, at the end of the day, the patients are always on the receiving end. It's your problem. Nurses believe they can be CMDs. Pharmacists feel they can be CMDs. Doctors are like, no, CMD. I don't believe that. Oh, the doctors are doing beyond what they should do. Oh, they are not allowing others to do this. Oh, doctors should not be the only ones to become CMDs. It's not even like a lot of medical students don't know what pharmacy entails. Hi guys, welcome or welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Abiyadu Rufai. I film videos about pharmacy school, my faith, my lifestyle and school life in general. If you are new here, welcome. Make sure you check out my other videos and do want to subscribe before leaving. If you are not new here, thank you so much for coming back. I appreciate your love and your support on my videos. So share the business of today. As you can see by the title of this video, we'll be doing something totally different. The title of our video is The Battle Between Medicine and Pharmacy. So low-key, if you're a medical student or a medical doctor, a pharmacist or a pharmacy student, you know about this underlying battle that we're going to talk about here today. In the video of today, we're talking about the root cause of this problem, a reality here in this school and in the field. And we'll be providing solutions to foster a better relationship between medicine and pharmacy in school, in the field, and beyond the field. So if that sounds like something you're interested in watching, stay tuned. Introduce yourselves. Oh. Okay, do you want to go first? No, 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 no. Okay. <laughs> Okay, um, hi guys, my name is um, Samuel Obsayo Mladi. I currently serve um, as the president of the Adabis Nobani Medical Association and also I'm finally a medical student. Oh, boy! Uh, it, it, it doesn't have to be if you would. Oh, shit! Alright. Okay, so I'm also going to my name. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm finally a family. Okay, so one time Senate president, oh, or oh, oh, senator, oh, or Nigerian ah. student, multiple times senator, oh. one time this, one time that, sir. So that's Everybody knows Fam T on my channel. <laughs> if you don't know Fam T, don't worry. I'll leave the link to his uh, school story below. So check out his story. So the first question is, what is your idea about the corresponding department? Just yes. Let's go first. Alright. So um, basically, I really, really admire medical students and doctors. And um, the reason for my own admiration is, I realize their curriculum is huge. Like it's grossly voluminous and the responsibility on the shoulder of a medical doctor is huge you understand it's very huge and i admire that and also i admire the versatility that comes with most medical students i know they are always very versatile they are into these into that you know, multiple stores and all that so it's something worth admiring quite all right even though i have my reservations on some issues but that's for later hmm. but yeah I, I really really admire the but is coming <laughs> <laughs> yeah so that's my take very quick okay what's your take about the corresponding department um actually all that um what I said about medicine, the versatility, the broad curriculum, I think same applies to um, pharmacy. As someone who was to apply to pharmacy uh, many, many years ago, I think, um, so pharmacy is something I've always loved I mean, as a course. Being in medicine is just a um, fit that got me so Pharmacy and medicine were the two courses that I had in mind. So pharmacy is actually you know, one of the best courses that you can ever um, study as a student. And um, the curriculum is so wide and good. Especially when you have to talk about the structures, the this, the that. I remember back then, in 2018, or okay, about when Quest 2 and other things around, you know, we did um, go together. And I said, those guys doing all this stuff, and I was like, wow, thank God I didn't come around. <laughs> <laughs> so, I was a pharmacy at the course, sorry. It's quite a beautiful one. Yeah. Okay, thank you for that. Next question is, are you aware of the underlying battle? Yes. No, that's no offense, that's ah, okay. <laughs> so, are you aware of the underlying battle? I'm talking about the underlying battle. I think um, it's what our definition of the battle is. Mm. But the truth is that, just like every other um, student in school, mm. or just like every other department in school, there are clashes of interest mm. between um, both departments. But um, the clash of interest, okay, I wouldn't go into um, the, what I think would be the reason. Maybe I don't know if you still have that. It's about that. So, the truth is that, um, yes, I think everybody, everybody's aware of that. <laughs> um, see. Yeah, like, like you said, it's, it's uh, very audible to the deaf and visible to the <laughs> Yes, and that's the issue that they and personally I feel it even spans beyond school. Mm -hmm. Even down to practice for yes. people that have especially in the hospital setting. Think that, you understand that there are issues, you know, the issues are and cut across board. And I don't even think those issues are applied, I mean applicable to just the setting in Nigeria. I feel like low-key is global. Just that in so many other clients they have it better compared to what we have here. But I know the underlying issues are actually there, they are existing. So the next question is what is your definition of the underlying battle? Let's start with school first. Do you want to go first? Who is going first? <laughs> <laughs> I'm to my house, my house. All right. So um, I feel I feel 
uh, the challenge basically is not a, not a tussle of power, rather. I would say it's more of lack of understanding from both parties. I just feel like a lot of medical students don't know what pharmacy entails. And to a reasonable extent, some pharmacy students are ignorant of what medicine entails. Or let me say, to put it in a better um, perspective, I feel like for non uh, medical students, at times we feel like medicine entails more than it actually entails. And I feel this perspective doesn't apply to just the pharmacy students now, or the ignorant pharmacy students, mm -hmm. but even people outside. You understand? So I feel it's more of a problem of one party not understanding the jurisdiction of the other. You understand? Both ways. So that majorly is, I feel, the uh, underlying factor for what the issues are. Of course, other factors would have culminated, you know, to build up what we have today. But I feel like that lack of mutual understanding of each other's jurisdiction is a number one problem from the student's perspective. Of course, other things would add up to it in practice. But at the level of student, I feel it's just that lack of mutual uh, understanding of each other's jurisdiction and each other's abilities. Mm -hmm. And that has actually built up to, you know, a whole lot of other things. But that's what I think is the problem. In this school. In this school, yes. yes. In this school, yeah. In this school. Yes. So, okay, um, I beg to differ at least to an extent, okay? okay? Um, that's the fact that I really would not say that the uh, knowing what each other's jurisdiction is. The question is what is the jurisdiction of a pharmacy student that a medical student you know, would not allow you to explore? Yet, um, what I would say is that, of course, you might say that maybe there's lack of understand which understanding, but talking about lack of understanding of each other's jurisdiction, I don't think anybody um, would, at least in this school, at least in this school, yes. would we'll stop another person from exploring to the um, to the best of his ability, okay. So what I see as the major cause of the problem is that the only thing is that you know something that you don't know its origin. So talking about what the theology is might not be too easy. This is something that a lot of you know a lot of us met on ground. So what exactly caused that? You may not be too sure. But for the little that you get to, me, I think I can say that it's just a plan of interest. It's just um if everyone wants to, I think it's just everybody trying to protect the interest of his or her own field. Okay. And in the course of doing that, per adventure, there is now um, a, 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 a so you have now gone beyond board. Maybe let's put that in quotes. Or you as you you, are, you seem to have been seen to have gone above board. Okay, oh, you, are, you, you are doing this excessively. I think it's just about everybody trying to protect his own, uh, you know, his own territory. And then it's that way. So it's not, it's not necessarily somebody invading to another business situation. Somebody trying to depart somebody, you know, um, in exploring. It's just about um, everybody trying to protect their own territory, and then everybody just to be. Um, <laughs> okay, so let's go to the field now. I believe you guys have experienced in the field like hospital setting, like you said, but I beyond that, what do you think is the underlying no, thing or an extension? Dr. Dr. Sawa should go first. Okay. Yes, you go first. Okay, um, a medical student should become a doctor. Of course. And every doctor was only a medical student. Mm -hmm. I think also whatever I did that's happened in the field is actually a cumulative effect or whatsoever has happened to mm. And one of those issues that we find, that we see, you know, like that, that was trying to protect, I was trying to correct something, but it's not really a matter of you know, trying to, you know, you know, not as much as jurisdiction or those things. And that's one thing that we see in practice. I don't believe that, oh, doctors are doing beyond what they should do. Oh, they're not allowing others to do this. Oh, doctors should not be the only ones to become saying this. Doctors should not be the only ones to, they are not the leaders of the team. It's, they, are, they are all born out of the fact, out of words, you know, fantasy was saying that, that nobody, you, you know, they are trying to invade that jurisdiction, they don't allow them to explore. It's just a clash of interest and a clash of ego, empty that way. Mm. Okay? Now, I'm talking about clash of ego, I'm not talking about that. You know, one is being um, egoistic, I'm not saying that. But just, everybody, just like I said, everybody trying to protect his own um, interest, everybody trying to protect his own territory. So that is one of the basic things I see, even on the field. Everybody wants to retain whatever power that they've got, and everybody wants to retain whatsoever um, benefits that the system has accorded them. So I think that is one of the, um, the major problems that we have in the field. And the other parties believe that, oh, you're staying too long, you know? I love what that's too now. So, that's what I was saying. And like I tell people, you know, one of those things that people talk about is that people have been doing it. They've not been doing it too well, although I barely found that. But I tell them that the fact that people, some people are not doing it well does not mean that they're not doing well because they are in this profession. Everybody could go there and not do it well. And there are one million and one people are also doing it well. So, it's just a matter of everybody trying to put their interest and everybody trying to do it. It's also about power the system has accorded them. Okay, so to, to a reasonable extent, I agree with some of the things he said, but then I still have my own reservations on some issues. Yes, he said something and then he was saying something about ego being in play, which I agree with totally. You understand? But then, I bet you differ on the fact that um, some people say some people have been doing it and some people are not doing it well. And it doesn't mean that there are no other people that can do it better. But then, I'm of the school of thoughts that if a set of persons are not doing it well, why not let some other people also try it out? 
Now, from the peculiarity of individual persons, I stand to be corrected, but I think to the best of my knowledge, when it comes to management and administration, to the best of my knowledge, of all medical courses, at least in this school, I think pharmacy has the best hands. And, and I, feel like, I feel like pharmacy students are taught about administration way better, you understand, than many other medical professions in, at least in this campus. That's your take. That's my take. Okay. You understand? And, and so I'm of the school of thought that, say for example, you mentioned the issue of uh, CMD, for example, mm -hmm. which I feel is a major problem. Nurses believe they can be CMDs, pharmacists feel they can be CMDs, doctors are like, no, CMD is for medical doctors. But then, for anybody that wants to be sincere, you know the office of the CMD is an administrative office, which means in other clients where things work, you have a hospital administrator who doesn't necessarily have to be a doctor. Do you understand? And so, a lot of men, I mean, health professionals feel like, no, anybody with administrative experience and qualification should be able to, you know, run that office. You get, which I agree with, though. But then, I feel like it's one of the major issues. And this also spills down to a whole lot of other things. I mean, down to salary scale, down to promotion, down to a whole lot of stuff. So, you know, in the civil service and other stuff, I've, I've been in the hospital setting and trust me, this issue is not as trivial as, you know, we see it to be. It's a whole lot that has eaten deep. I mean, it has eaten so deep that this clash has even created, or let me say, this clash is even uh, detrimental to even patients. And whether we like it or not, at the end of the day, the patients are always on the receiving end. I have said multiple examples, but I won't go into that now. So I, I believe that, yes, what has occurred from school has spilled into practice. But I feel like what is happening in practice is also affecting what is going on in the school too. Because whether you like it or not, those in practice are also the ones coming back to teach those in school. And, you know, it goes both ways. And except if my um, honorable doctor here would want to shy away from the fact, I would say to a reasonable extent, but even those teaching pharmacy students have a role to play. And I feel like those teaching medical students too have a role to play in the issue on ground. So, personally, I don't believe the health professionals should be at low heads. We are supposed to be like, you know, complementing each other, but it's sad that this is the reality we have here. So, it's just what it is, basically. I think that's my own thing. Okay, um, let me give you up to that. Number one is that, you know, I appreciate the fact that when you got to say you were explicit enough that, or you came to that, that is your own opinion. But that is not to get okay, in the spirit of full disclosure. The issue is that sometimes, you know, you really don't know much, or you may, you may not know much about the curriculum of medical students in the field. Let me say, I used to believe this until I also got to my final year. There are weeks or months of teachers dedicated to management in the medical school. Get to management, to monitoring and evaluation, to leadership, and they are full classes, they are full classes on their own. Okay? And, um, and they take weeks, okay? So I know. So, and I mean weeks, many, many weeks to you know, they do that. Which I know that. I'm sure even in pharmacy it can be more than many weeks. It can't take the whole semester. I'm very sure of that. So I bet to differ. Yeah, okay. Depending on the school. I think for us here, yeah, it's about two to three semesters. You will do it 400 level second semester, and then you will still do 500 the level. Is, is, okay, does it take the whole semester? Yes. You mean all you do in that semester? Is Basically, that? all I do in clinical pharmacy in 400 level second semester is leadership and business. There is no clinical pharmacy. No. 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 It's clinical pharmacy wait, and pharmacy administration. No, so if it is clinical pharmacy and pharmacy administration, and you said that basically all that you do is you no. Know, the leadership. The question is, where is the leader? where is the clinical part of that? You, you literally start clinical pharmacy from three hundred level, two hundred level. Except you start CMPC in the clinical level. So you, you do have a, you have whooping four years to do from clinical pharmacy to pharmacy administration from a department. So four years of your stay in pharmacy school. Of course, this depends on schools. For schools that do D, you have four five years. Mm -hmm. For schools that do BFAM, you have at least four years. Okay. You understand? Of clinical pharmacy and pharmacy administration. So if my take on the fact that I feel like pharmacy students have more. Uh, management and administrative uh, progress and teaching over medical students might be wrong, but then you would agree with me that they do have that skill and the technical know how. I'm not saying they don't have that skill. Okay. I think we have, to, we have to get something clear. I'm not saying they don't have that skill, but the premise that they have is more than medical students, what I'm trying to do. Oh, which is what I, I agree with you now that yes. it might be wrong. Yes, okay. it's, it's, okay. it's, yes. it's actually wrong. It's actually wrong. In that, um, because it's, it's, it's a premise that, has not, that, that can't be confirmed because if, no, 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 you can only tell me that they do it for a full semester if that is all they've been doing, okay, for the entire semester. Now, as a medical student, I stay in school most of the time. Okay. Now they did three months, two months, one month breaks, and you know, medical students forget about it. Which means that if you say that you do those things for semesters, it's like I also come and tell you that those times that you get for your, for your holidays, okay. I'm also doing something like that. I'm also okay. so, but if you have been doing an administration or leadership whatever from some level, I wouldn't say no because I'm not in pharmacy. Okay. But I'm sure that what you'll be doing is you just be doing a pinch. This a pinch that and by the time of which one you add everything together, they may not even be up to a full semester week. A semester is about 13 weeks. Okay. So if you add everything together, okay, you do maybe a week there, you do three weeks. Are you telling me that from 200 to 
So if you're 400, you're 400, you're like, okay. like, add everything together. You, you talk about three semesters. Okay. Does that mean that? At least. At least. Oh, you didn't say at least, yes. I'm at least. But I'm telling you. No, 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 that's about five years, right? Yeah, about four years, four years from, from two hundred years. Mm-hmm. From two hundred, that's about um thirteen times sixty is um twenty six. In no, in four places, that's about one hundred and four. Okay. So if out of one hundred and four um weeks, I'm just paying for myself, I'm about thirty nine weeks. Then what have I come to do? So have I come to learn administration? Okay. So this means, or I of course, what I want to understand is that administration as a part of medicine of pharmacy is just because whether you like it or not, you will be an administrator. It might not be. I know in the totality of the hospital. Mm-hmm. It might not be in the totality of the institution, it might be even within your own hospital. It might be within your even your own department. You get? Even if you have hospital administrators who we'll, we'll man the entire hospital. Within each department, in within the pharmacy department, you have, a, you have an egg of the department, you have the chair of the pharmacy unit, you have the chair of the medical unit, you have the chair of the surgical unit. So as the chair of those units, you are an administrator. That is the reason or the major reason behind you being taught administration. You are to, you are not being taught administration because I can go and take over the hospital. You are taught that you are either a medical student or a pharmacy student, you are taught that within the confines that you are in. You okay. have. So, you are now saying that you use 39 weeks for administration. I will not mind after this to look at the going My sister is a, you know, my cousin is a pharmacy student. In fact, he is a pharmacist. Okay. So, I wouldn't mind doing that because I am sure that you can notice 39 weeks. Oh, you have pharmacy, you have pharmacy, 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 So, you say 39 weeks. Well, I, 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 won't, I won't decide that you use that from 12 levels. It's possible. But, I stand on the premise that if you put together all the weeks of administration, all the weeks that you've spent doing less administration, they cannot be up to even a semester of 13 weeks. You, can, you cannot leave your basics to go to administration because of any reason. So I'm like, saying this based on what I think should be. However, the only objective way of confirming this is if you actually have a curriculum and then we can complete them. Okay. Yeah, I can talk about the one for medicine. Okay. Okay. The one for medicine, I know you spend some weeks, but of course not 13 weeks. Okay. Your final year, you are taught administration. I mean, you are taught leadership. You are taught management, you are taught monitoring and evaluation, you are taught everything that has to do with administration. Okay? okay? So, you know it. Okay. But, I won't say that you, I, I won't compare. Because even talking about knowing it, it's not a factor of how long you were taught. Okay. The factor of um, personal development, you don't know. Okay. Okay? You may not go to, um, you, may, you may not do MBA, but you may develop yourself to an extent that, you know, yes, you will manage so well. People, you know, people, people do businesses in school. Sure. And businesses survive. You get it? And you know that without even being Managers or whatever. So what I would say is this: the, the, there's no basis for comparison when it comes to the, how many months you used here or used there. It's a matter of um, self development. How will you do it better? And that is where I want us all to understand something: that some people are not doing it well. They are not. It is not because they belong to a particular profession. It is because by personality they are not doing it well. I have seen people managing their own pharmacy stores, and pharmacy stores are not doing well. And the pharmacy too. Okay. Um, can I come here? Sure. First and foremost, I would like to debunk something you said. Definitely. Now, 39 weeks of doing just administration. One thing I want to understand is this. The way the pharmacy curriculum or uh, calendar works is totally different from how medical school works. Okay. Now, if I am right, correct me if I'm not. Medical school is kind of, you they literally teach you everything about something in maybe a few classes and then you go, say for example now, in maybe 200, 300, you do a whole lot of anatomy, physiology and biochemistry. Am I right? Sure. Okay, so by the time you go higher, even if you would be doing anything in those areas, probably just won't be applied. Right now, the way pharmacy curriculum is, everything you need to learn all through pharmacy school is, sp- I mean, splitted through the four classes. Let me put it like that, because there is no pharmacy school, so it's splitted through the four or five classes depending on what school or what program you are running. It is a B farm or farm D. You understand? Now, the way these things are structured, now, and that's where the peculiarity of pharmacy school comes in, and I feel like that's what a lot of people don't understand about pharmacy school. For medical school, you have time. Except, uh, 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 okay, hold on, hold on, uh, Doctor Sami, hold on. What do I mean by you have time? You run your curriculum in weeks. I mean, there's, there are some classes you do. 18 months, but 16 medical months. Medical school goes in weeks. Good. But that, I mean, that's, that's I mean there's some classes you do 18 months, you do 16 months, you do. Now, for many pharmacy students, you understand, if you ask any pharmacy student, they wouldn't mind running a curriculum like medical school. <laughs> you know the reason why I said so? You know the reason why I said so? Okay. We have so much. There's so much to learn. You understand? But the unfortunate thing is that we are, you know, we are running a calendar like every other basic university student. You understand? Which means we need to take in a whole lot, understand a whole lot in little time. My chief. You know, the, the grass always looks greener on the other side. I am not saying it is easier. You get Don't get me wrong. So if it's not, if, if you are not saying it is easier, I am not saying it is easier. Because it's not the basis of they would have loved to do that. Mm-hmm. I am not saying it is easier. Okay. In Bobo, you. In some other schools, it spans more than that. For schools where they put family and all, I feel like they even have it up to like four or five semesters where they take, um, you know, um, administrative classes. You get And basically, what that means is that if they are doing, you know, courses in administrative classes for four or five semesters, of course, you can't expect that administration is the only thing you'll be doing. That's another peculiarity in pharmacy school. 
we let the whole lot simultaneously. So as you're trying to cram in structures, you're trying to cram in, you know, pathology of conditions, you're taking in pharmacology, you're taking in the chemistry, botanical names, and a whole lot together at the same time. But does that invalidate the, um, what's the word, the worth of what we've taken in administrative class? I don't agree. But now you are that you have enlightened me on the fact that medical students take classes in administration too, I agree with you. But then I still feel, and I still stand on the point that this is enough reason why I feel like the office of the CMD, because except we want to write to ourselves, yeah, I know there might be some hospitals where doctors are not the CMDs, you understand, but in reality, we know that majority of hospitals in Nigeria are headed by doctors. And I feel like this is what a lot of the other health professionals are agitating against, like, give other professionals that, you know, have the same qualification, you know, with, as regards to administration, the opportunity to hold this office. In fact, I feel this issue even spilled over down to the issue of even appointment of Minister of Health. And at some point, the medical doctor was the DJ of NAFTA, and I knew PCN and I mean PSN then agitated the whole lot that the only thing that is even solely for pharmacists, you know, you are bringing doctors to, you know, infiltrate again and all. And I feel like this, uh, what's the word? This, I don't want to use the word exploitation, I don't want to use that word, but I feel like this uh, illegal penetration, because if I can use that word, you get is the crux behind the agitation of a whole lot of other health professionals. And I feel like if you bring a nurse here, they will have their you know, story to tell. If you bring a medical lab scientist here, they will have their stories to tell. And yes, I love doctors. At some point, I wanted to study medicine. But the moment I entered accident and emergency in last week, I changed my mind. We have different flares. I can't stand blood. So, and I know that is one important thing when it comes to practicing medicine. And you agree with me that it's, you, can't, you can't practice medicine if you can't stand stuff like that. And so I was like, what else can give me the kind of fulfillment I would get from being a doctor? Pharmacy would give me that. And since I you know, got into the system, I've enjoyed it and I loved it. And I'm still loving it. You understand? But I feel like the table grant should be open to you know, every other health profession. And I'm not saying this for just pharmacists. You know, I'm saying this for every other health professional. I have a nursing student in my flat. Same complaint. And, and, and Oddly is also a health so it can also become a CMD. And Oddly. Yes. Note, I said health workers that have administrative qualifications. So you can also go for, you know, um, MBA or after that sometime, but you join again. Are there, are there not, you know, are there not systems where hospital administration, I mean, administrators with, I mean, degrees in health administration, actually, I mean, administer and see to the runnings of the hospital? 